I'm Steve Mann and this is Paper Classroom. Welcome to another Water and Chemical Additives tutorial. This particular tutorial is all about dry strength aids. In other words, chemicals that you add to the paper that will improve the, improve the tensile strength of the dry material. So I suppose the first question to ask is, why do we add strength aids? And the answer is often it's cheaper than refining. So there's a lot of money goes into the power to refine fibres. It's a lot cheaper sometimes just to throw in a bit of something like a bit of starch. So one reason or the main reason for adding strength aids is cheaper than refining. And I suppose the next question is how do dry strength aids work? Well, it's very simple, really. They just supply extra hydroxyl groups to bridge the gaps that were previously unbridged. I've shown you uh, this diagram before. This is just a slight, modi slight modification of it. So here we have the surface of one fibre with its OH groups. Here we have the surface of another fibre with its OH groups. And Hydrogen bonding only actually works over quite a short distance. It's the weakest of all the bonds. So you can see here that three of the five pairs of hydroxyl groups are close enough to be able to form hydrogen bonds. The other two are too far away. So this is where dry strength aids come in. Dry strength aids will sit between those two hydroxyl groups and they will form bonds there and there and here and here. So now rather than having three pairs of hydroxyl groups forming a bond you've got five pairs where two pairs are via this dry strength aid. So this is how dry strength agents work. It's quite simple really. So the next question is, where do we get our dry strength additives from? What sort of materials do we use that are bristling with hydroxyl groups? Well, the cheapest and most plentiful is just natural starches. So any old starch from potato or wheat or corn, tapioca, rice, sago, any form of starch does exactly what we need it to. Now the problem with using natural starch or unmodified starch is in the wet state, in the, in the wet end, there's no natural affinity for starch and for cellulose. So when we throw starch into the wet end, unmodified starch, maybe 80 or 90 percent of it will stay in the water go through the wire as white water and off down to the effluent plant maybe 10 percent or so will stay in the in the sheet and that's enough to give you the dry strength that you need the problem with that of course is it causes great pollution and so was born modified starches, in particular cationic starches. So cationic starches have this big plus charge, therefore they are attracted to the negative fibres. So because you've now got this attraction, you only need to put in exactly the amount of starch that you actually need. What you put in, all of it will stick to the fibres, None of it will be in the white water, so none of it will go down to the effluent plant. So modified starches naturally will be more expensive. If you are only using a tenth of them, you might expect the manufacturer to charge ten times as much so that they get the same money. Another material is gums. Maybe you eat these sweets, wine gums, chewing, not chewing gums, wine gums and things. A gum 
is a very short, highly branched polysaccharide. And the high branching means very high viscosity. So often these uh, sweets in the shapes of fruits and things like that are actually made from gums. So this is where the word comes from. So again, bristling with poly with uh, hydroxyl groups, I'll, I'll show you a picture in a moment. And then PAM polyacrylamides. So man-made materials from oil, different type of mechanism. You would never really use these just for dry strength because they're far, far more expensive than any of the other ones. But, you know, they can be and they have been, but infrequently. So this is a natural starch, just to remind you. A starch is made from glucose molecules. All the glucose molecules are organised in the same direction like the elephants going round the uh, circus ring. One, two, three hydroxyl groups on every glucose. So these starch molecules that can be hundreds or thousands of glucose units long will contain tens of thousands of hydroxyl groups. There are two main types of starch. This one here is a fairly branched starch. This is called a myelopectin. There's also another type of starch which is a lot less branched that we call amylose. So natural starch, there is more than one type. If we move on and look at uh, a modified starch like cationic starch, this is those same start or glucose molecules, just uh, pictured in a different way. And as you can see, the manufacturer has chemically modified the starch they've put this group on there a nitrogen with a big plus so they've made that molecule rather than being neutral charge it's positively charged so that it will be attracted to the negative fibers this here is a gum as you can see you've got these glucose type molecules again again branched branched um, if you look you've got an OH and an H you only need to swap those two around H there OH here you've got a different type of gum now this particular gum is guar gum but there are others there are there's xanthan gums uh, three or four other ones so there's different types of gums you could use very much like um, glucose and therefore normal starch. Palm polyacrylamide. So polyacrylamide is a, a long chain polymer. These square brackets means that this is the repeating unit. So again, there'll be hundreds or thousands of these units and the mechanism by which it attaches itself to the fiber is slightly different in this case. And just to finish off, uh, it's an interesting uh, piece of work done by Martin in, in 1980. He put some cationic starch in a, a furnish and then he measured where the starch was. So he took a beaker with some fibre in, some fines, which always accompanies the fibre, and some clay. He put in some cationic starch, gave it a good stir around and then he separated it into the three components and worked out where all the cationic starch had gone. And what you can see is one part or 10% of the cationic starch stuck to the surface of the fibres. Half of it stuck to the fines and 40% actually stuck to the clay particles. Now you don't want to stick it to the clay, you want it to be stuck to the fibre and the fines to hold them together, to give them that extra strength. So the quest first question is, why is it like that? Well one, of the well, one of the answers, the reason why there's so much on the fines is that 
the starch can only attach itself to a surface. It can't get inside the molecules. It can't get in the clay. It can't get in the fibre. It can't get into the fines. It can only be on the surface. And because fines are so small, one gram of fines will have hugely greater surface area than one gram of fibre. So that's why we're seeing more on the fines than on the fiber. Um, clay has these positive charges and negative charges. So the negative bits of the clay will be very attractive to these positive molecules, which is why a lot of it goes there. And that's the one place that we don't want it. So one of the things that this does it tells us in our process in what order to add things. Now, fibre and fines, you can't separate. That's the way it is. But if you put clay in first and then you put your starch in, it will distribute itself in this way. But if you take the fibre and fines, put the cationic starch in at that point, then the fines will pick up a lot of the, of the starch, the fibre will pick up a lot of the starch, and then later on down the system, further down the pipe, if you put the clay in then, then it can't take the starch away from where it already is. So the clay does not pick up any of the starch. If there's any left in the, uh, in the stock, in the water, any free starch, then it'll pick that up but it will not steal it from the fibre. So this tells you that in the wet end of a paper machine, order of addition can be very important. And this is a beautiful example. So that uh, covers that. That's all I want to say on that particular topic. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it entertaining and informative. As usual, please feel free to uh, give us any feedback or ask any questions. And I look forward to seeing you in another one of my videos. Bye for now.